the body of a healthy feminine woman wants to be pregnant or breastfeeding all the time. When men are not living physical lives where they need to work with their physical bodies every day for multiple hours, they cannot build the testosterone necessary if men are leaning towards their feminine side and women are leaning towards their masculine side. Attraction is not there. Wasserfall, ja. Kuala Lumpur Airport. I like. I like. There's a little oasis in the middle of the airport. That will be our happy place for the next five hours until finally the flight back home to Bali is going. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I often receive criticism for being a proponent of a one truth. Like, when people watch my videos, they, they get this feeling of Robert is talking about a, a core, an essential, like a, a most basic form of truth of something that is good for us as human beings, that is aligned with human nature and other things that are not in alignment with human nature. And people criticize like, but hey, we have free will. People are, some people are living in cities. Some people are living in the countryside. Some people are doing this. Some people are that and uh, are doing that and like, we basically should decide on our, upon ourselves how we want to live. Let's explore this further. The more I'm diving into the topic of the five biological laws that I shared with you a couple of days ago, and like on this episode, I received so much feedback and so much interest of people saying, wow, that's super fascinating. Let's dive into that even further. Um, like I have the sensation that I, I, I shared that with Joe yesterday. I, I have the feeling that this framework of the five biological laws is for me personally the third time I discover almost like a like an, a deeper explanation of how reality works. The first moment when I had this feeling was when I discovered human design four, four years ago. And this, this broadened my perspective of like, oh, wow, this is how like reality is working. And this is how we as human beings are, are like steering through this reality. And we are like super individual and we need to find our like unique footprint. And then the second time was when I, when I discovered spiral dynamics, the evolution of, of human consciousness uh, through history and the unique challenges we are facing right now and like discovering this model was was even more like oh wow another like another dimension opens up and i have the same sensation now with the with a uh, for the third time with the five biological laws and that's why this topic will be um something that will be very present over the next couple of uh episodes and probably even longer let's see <music> human design and spiral dynamics highlight the differences between each one of us. The five biological laws connect us to our similarities and I have the feeling that they are able to work nicely together with the other two models and at the same time give us a deeper sense of groundedness in our biology. Because what the five biological laws say is that we are more lion or more dog or more cat or more gorilla than we are not. Like our biology, although our, our brains have like exploded in capacity over the, over the past one to three hundred thousand of years ago, our biology almost remained the same. 
and that's why it's it may be very rewarding to look at our biological needs in order to get a sense for the truth in order to sense get a sense for what is our nature and what the bi bi five biological laws are stating is that the different genders men and women have uniquely different biological designs almost like our innate biological purpose that if we follow that we are experiencing joy and fulfillment and health what is the what is the biological design of an aligned woman according to the five biological laws it is to be a mother to be either pregnant or breastfeeding to nourish the next generation of life on this planet and the biological design of a man is to protect and to provision to take care of the territory the territory is something that is that is really 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 important um, on a biological level for a man if we don't have a strong sense of our territory and feel that it is healthy and that it is protected and that it is thriving then we cannot be thriving <laughs> two main dynamics that the five biological laws are explaining that we discussed today on this plenty of time that we have here at the airport in great lengths. One of them is a mode of being that is currently underrepresented for women and the second one for men. Let's explore them. Very fascinating. So first of all what the five biological laws are saying is that uh, the body of a healthy feminine woman wants to be pregnant or breastfeeding all the time. Sure, in our modern civilized lives, there are all sorts of reasons for a woman not to want to be pregnant. I don't have enough money. I don't have a stable enough relationship. I want to do a career. I want to have a fit body. I want to travel, like all sorts of reasons why not to do that. And these are totally valid. The thing is just your body like the physical vehicle in which, you, in which you're traversing this incarnation has a different agenda. And according to the five biological laws, this is not something that can change. And if the body of a healthy woman is not pregnant or breastfeeding currently, then there is a fundamental conflict in your biology. The second dynamic relates to men. And it talks about hierarchy. Hierarchy is something that in our egalitarian, community-oriented circles is something that people don't like. Hierarchy is seen as something bad. Some people even believe that the solution to all the conflicts on this planet is a total flattening of a hierarchy so that there is no hierarchy at all. But the five biological laws are stating that to men, the dynamics of hierarchy where you are in the food chain are of utmost importance to have a sense of clarity on your territory, on your place where you belong. And subsequently, the two most prevailing biological conflicts that lead to all sorts of quote unquote diseases, as we call them, which as the biology, five biological laws are explaining are not a disease but actually a, a sensible special program that your body runs in order to step into alignment again, in order to thrive, in order to survive. So what is very present for men is the territorial conflict. When men don't have a sense of this is my territory and I'm here to protect this against intruders and I'm here to provide for the people that are in my territory really have the strong sense of this is my space. Of course, in our modern civilized lives, we replace that by the football club we champion for. This becomes our territory. Or our company, where, which we feel loyal to, and this becomes our territory. But behind all that, and like, yeah, 
tribal cultures, this was really the physical territory. Like this was my land, and these were my people living on it, and like I protected them with everything I had, and I, I, I provided for them, and I, I saw like I saw myself as somebody who took great pride and great joy and great fulfillment and great great health, great thriving out of being of service for my territory, for my tribe. And since this attitude of there's something that is so dear to my heart that I cannot think of anything more meaningful than to serve this, because this is so rare, men in modern societies lack meaning. And the same is true for women. Their most fundamental conflict is the identity conflict. And the identity conflict arises when women don't feel a strong sense of this is where I belong. This is the territory where I belong to. Like this is my place. Very similar dynamic than for men, but played out differently on a biological level. When women sense this is my place, here I feel home. And this is something that I can nurture, can nourish. Like this nourishing, nurturing quality of a woman that is at the most fundamental uh, a basis of parenting, of motherhood. Like just really being a mother for my space, for my tribe, for my territory, for my children. When a woman doesn't have this strong sense of purpose of this is this is my task to nurture to nourish like she's lacking profound meaning too and since these qualities both for men and for women are so rare in modern societies we get lost we get distracted we resort to all sorts of addictions we distract ourselves with shit that doesn't really fulfill our deep down need for nurturing something that we believe in for women and and uh, protecting and providing for um, a territory as men. But the similarity both genders need is they need something to be of service for. If this is lacking, then deep down on a biological level, life is meaningless. And this dynamic gets even more obvious when we look at the four elements out of which everything on this, in, in life on this planet is uh, composed of. And we realize that two elements, the fire, and the air element are regarded as the masculine elements, while the earth and the water elements are seen as the feminine elements. And out of this realization, we can, we can uh, learn what are the essential needs for both women and men in order to thrive more. In our modern societies, men are basically in their air element, in the mental realm 24 seven, like we are thinking we are thinking constantly and we are overthinking everything but what we are lacking collectively is the embodiment of the fire element this really this zest for life this vigor this strong life force energy that pushes past boundaries and that gets cultivated by living physical lives and this is an essential need that the five biological laws are uh, describing that when this is lacking that when men are not living physical lives where they need to work with their physical bodies every day for multiple hours they cannot build the testosterone necessary in order to be an embodiment of this masculine force that is protecting and providing and on the other side for women the most intense unmet need for most women on this planet is a stable long-form mature relationship because this gifts them with this feeling of identity this is where i belong if this is not present if i don't know where i belong if i don't know where my territory is and this gets this gets this gets defined by the relationship big time because all of the relationship results the possibility that children are arising which for the body of the of the of the female homo sapiens is there reason for being to nurture and to nourish the next generation to be pregnant and to be breastfeeding all the time what are you doing this was definitely my first time washing my feet at a waterfall at an airport good experience <laughs>
So while I find it very beautiful that in uh, the green developmental stage and the spiral dynamics model that is arising more and more, especially in our like, spirituality consciousness bubble, a lot of men stay at home, like being full-time fathers and caring for their children and uh, leaning into their feminine energy. And uh, a lot of women are pursuing big business and chasing after money and um, really playing playing the masculine game. While that is very beautiful for our, for our individual maturity, it can get out of hand too. And this not only jeopardizes healthy relationships because if the polarity is fundamentally out of sync, if men are leaning towards their feminine side and women are leaning towards their masculine side, like attraction is not there. And as a result, probably there won't be any children, which is against our human nature because then women have nothing to nourish and to nurture and men have no reason to protect this territory because there's no next generation of life arriving and growing up. What do you see behind me is a perfect, perfect example of a woman stepping into her masculine, like look at her, she's stepping into her masculine fire, you see that quite literally, in the way she dresses, in the way she looks, like she's striving for, for freedom, libre, she's striving for freedom, for independence, which are characteristics that are fundamental opposite to the feminine characteristics her body asks her to embody. peers around them. They need fundamentally community. In the modern setting of the nuclear family, mother, father, child, it's fundamentally impossible to make the system work. Because if the sole pressure for nurturing and nourishing the child is only on the mother, that's obviously not working. And if the sole uh, pressure for protection and provision is only on the father, that's not working. We need multiple women and multiple men and multiple ch children who are basically raising each other as, it's, as it is the case in uh, many indigenous tribes. And if we create an interconnected community setting like this that is structured around the three uh, circles that are containing each other, the innermost circle are the children, the second circle are the women who are nurturing and nourishing the children, and then the outermost circle are the men who are protecting and provisioning the women so that they can nurture and nourish the children, then we can finally bring the society into order. I believe the only way to make life work for somebody is to make it work for anybody. Like we as men cannot thrive without our women and our children thriving. The women cannot thrive without their men and their children thriving. The children cannot thrive without the men and the women thriving. Like all the needs are interrelated and it's our invitation to design entirely new living systems. And yes, there are multiple different challenges that are arising if we embark on this journey. And what that will be is what we're going to explore over the next videos. For now, thank you for embarking with me on this maybe triggering, maybe overwhelming, maybe relieving. Yeah, whatever the reaction is that this evoked in you, thank you for letting that happen forward to our upcoming upcoming explorations and I'm very curious to hear from you. See you tomorrow finally from Bali again. Long two days of travel. Excited to be back home. Thank you. We are thinking.